I think I've created the most ambitious readathon TBR pile in all of herstory. <laughs> it is the Woman in Translation readathon week at the end of August. I'm excited to participate and I'm going to share with you all the books that I'm hoping to read during that week. And uh, I'm wearing my Clue t-shirt, uh, which has nothing to do with Women in Translation, uh, but just as sort of justice for Miss Scarlet, because Miss Scarlet is always getting the blame. But you know, sometimes it's Colonel Mustard. <laughs> um, so, uh, Women in Translation readathon. Uh, yeah, it's happening from August 25th to the 31st. And uh, it's, it's sort of an offshoot um, out of Women in Translation Month, um, which is an initiative that was started because out of all the books that are published in the English-speaking world, only a small percentage of those uh, were written in another language, originally written in another language. And out of that small percentage, only a smaller percentage were books originally written by women. So, you know, it's an initiative to get people interested and excited to read more Women in Translation and, you know, as much as I get uh, excited about participating in this month and in this readathon week, um, I really interested in following it and seeing all the things that people are reading because I get so many suggestions for other books that I wouldn't have come across otherwise. Um, so, but I'm especially excited to participate in this readathon week, which is hosted by the wonderful, wonderful booktubers Kendra Winchester and Matthew Sharapa. I'll put links below to all of their information um, and uh, and a link specifically to Matthew's announcement uh, video for, for this this week, which has all the, the prompts, because um, it's not a readathon without prompts to um, help you choose your books. Uh, but I'll, I'll put all the prompts below as well if you're interested in participating. And I'm especially excited to participate this year because last year I wanted to participate and I made a TBR video like this of books that I was hoping to read. And then during that week of the end of August, I just got massively busy with work and I barely read anything during that week at all. Um, actually, I didn't read anything. I was working um, constantly and, and at the end of the day, I was just stressed out and tired. And uh, yeah, so, you know, and these things happen sometimes, you know, you have the go in with, with the best intentions and sometimes just life things get in the way and life things should always take priority over reading goals like this. But, um, but yeah, and to sort of make amends, not that I need to make amends, but um, to make up for the fact that I didn't actually participate during the week last year, I've made a very ambitious TBR pile, um, sort of crazy ambitious, I, I don't know what I'm thinking really. But I was sort of, um, so I'll start with the, the prompts and I'll start with the, the third prompt, um, which is to read a book where the gap between original publication um, and the translation spans at least five years. And the book that I've chosen for that is this massive book, which is 944 pages long. Um, so to read it in, in a week, it's going to be quite ambitious. And it's called The Eighth Life by Nino Naratashwili. And, uh, and Nino is a Georgian author. And, uh, and I haven't read much or any um, fiction out of uh, Georgia. And, you know, just because as I don't know that much about the, the country of Georgia, um, you know, naturally being an American, when I hear Georgia, I think of the peach state. Um, but Georgia is also a country that has a population of a little over three and a half million. And, uh, and yeah, and it's a, it's a country I'd like to know more about. And so this is an epic family epic um, taking place over the course of the 20th century, um, roughly from the, the, uh, the Russian Revolution to the end of Soviet, um, Soviet Union rule in the country of Georgia. And, uh, and yeah, and it's a very, um, uh, it's a novel that um, the, the novelist, um, she was uh, born in the country of Georgia, uh, but she moved to Germany. And so she, she writes both in Georgian and in German, and um, and is published a lot in in uh, in Germany, and uh, and so this novel was originally published in 
the year 2014. So it meets, you know, that, that goal. It's been exactly five years and it's not actually been published yet. Um, so this is an advanced copy proof um, from Scribe Publications, which are a independent publisher in the UK that I really like. And the novel is a family saga. It's sort of described as uh, War and Peace meets the House of Spirits, uh, which doesn't mean much to me because I haven't read either of those books, but it's also likened to, if you like intergenerational family sagas, it's also likened to the novel Homegoing. And, uh, and I love the novel Homegoing, so if it's anything like this, I'm you know, really going to be really excited um, to, to read it and follow along. And uh, yeah, and, and I've talked about before about how I love a good family epic, and I think I'm sort of inspired to read this just because you know, the last video I made was all about big books I'm excited to read. And, and so uh, because you know, I'm currently reading this like, big, massive book um, that's uh, listed for the Booker Prize. And, uh, and so, yeah, I'm excited to read another up and coming book that has a lot of excitement and anticipation around it. Um, it people have been, um, who, who know this book in its original language have been wanting to see the English translation, but obviously it took a long time to translate it because it's such a long book. And it is, um, it's, uh, took so long that, um, and was so like ambitious that it actually took two translators to um, translate it. So it is translated by Charlotte Collins and Ruth Martin. And uh, Charlotte Collins, actually, I, I know her as a translator because um, she also translated the novel A Whole Life um, by Robert C. Thaler, um, which is a novel I really liked, um, but I won't talk about here because it's written by a man, and this is Women in Translation Readathon, so, uh, so, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm yeah, very excited to read the, the Eighth Life, and I expect this will probably take up most of my time during the Readathon week. Um, I, I don't know how much I'm going to read or read all of it, but, um, but yeah, uh, so, so I mainly expect to be reading this, but also um, just because it's fun to pick other books for a TBR pile. Um, I want to pick other books for the prompt as well. So uh, uh, there's another prompt which is uh, to read a book in a non-traditional format and for that I want to um, also incorporate one of the bonus prompts which is to read uh, The Girl Who Wrote Loneliness by Kyon Suk Shin and, uh, and this is a, a book that uh, Matthew put on as a bonus prompt on this because it's one of his favorite or is his favorite novel of all time. And, uh, and it's a novel I've been wanting to read for a while and, um, and I got it quite a long time ago on audiobook but haven't listened to it yet. So, um, so you know, I, when I talked about in my big books video about my strategy of wanting to, you know, when I can't, don't want to lug around a big huge book during the course of my day, I can listen to an audiobook as I'm walking from place to place. So, um, so yeah, I'd like to listen to this book as well during the week um, as, uh, as the readathon is, is going on. And, you know, and, and Matthew and I, our, our book tastes quite often align. You know, we don't always agree on books. Sometimes we disagree on, on a quality of book, but, um, but since this is his favorite book, I'm, I'm expecting it's one that I'll really appreciate, and so very excited to read it. And then uh, the third prompt, um, which is actually listed as number one, is read a book with the translator credited on the book cover, because so few books in translation actually credit the translator on uh, the cover. And um, so, uh, so this is a book of short stories, which I thought would be good to, to fit in, because if I'm not getting along with this much bigger book and or want some relief from it, you know, I can switch to a short story. And um, this is actually a book of short stories as well as two novellas, and that's Fish Soup by Margarita Garcia Robayo. And uh, it is translated by Charlotte Coombe. Um, it uh, was originally um, the, the author. Um, she's from Colombia. And, uh, and yeah, and so um, the, and it, the, the novellas sound quite interesting in this. So there's a novella called Waiting for the Hurricane, um, which is set, is set on the Caribbean coast and is by, uh, written from the perspective of a girl who wants to escape her life and escape her country. And uh, there's also a novella called Sexual Education, um, which is about a young woman going to school where the abstinence is taught as you know, the, the thing that everybody should be doing, everybody should be practicing abstinence, but she finds that among her circle of friends, they have 
much different common practices between them in their sexual activities. And so it's about the sort of conflict of that. And then there are short stories about a whole range of subjects. And yeah, I just heard really good things about this book, Fish Soup. So I'm, uh, I've been eager to read this as well. And so it's a good excuse. Um, but then also just in general, uh, other books I want to read for Women in Translation Month, you know, maybe before the Readathon week um, that I'm hoping to get to. One is this very short book, Happening, by Annie Arnaud. And, you know, this is one of my favorite new writers um, that I've discovered this year because I read her book The Years earlier this year, which is a book that I would highly, highly recommend to anybody who is looking for a good inspiration of something to read, either in uh, Wit Month or Wit Readathon Week um, is a uh, yeah, amazing novel um, that I've talked about a lot, so I won't talk about it a lot more here, um, but it's about a, a woman's life in France and also the, the history of a certain social class in France over the past like 60 or so years. And uh, so, but I'll put a link to my full review of this below if you want to know more about why I loved this book so much. Um, but yeah, I'm also hoping to read her book Happening, um, which was also published this year. And then I'd also like to read um, this book by Bridget Vanderbeek uh, called You Would Have Missed Me. And Bridget Vanderbeek is a, a, another writer that I've been wanting to read more of because I also loved her novel The Muscle Feast, um, which is about this really dominant um, negative patriarchal influence in this family. Um, and it's a really good uh, novel that was published several years ago. So yeah, I've been wanting to read more by this author. And this is another book that was just published um, a few months ago and newly translated. So yeah, eager to read that as well. So that is my, my um, readathon list um, that I'm hoping to get to you. And yeah, so wildly ambitious, but you know, it's, it's good to have like big ambitions. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I'll, we'll uh, see how I get along during the, the readathon week. Hopefully other things won't come up that'll conflict and cause me not to read. Um, but let me know if you want to participate in this as well. Um, if uh, books that you're hoping to read during the week, if you've made a TBR list and, uh, and yeah, I'll speak to you again soon. Bye everyone.